All right, so we're going to shift gears, and we're going to talk about sales. <clears throat> I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. I'm going to take you through my sales process, which is about 15 minutes, and how I sell fitness programs to people, and how I get them to realize that they need to buy three times a week a personal training. And I don't really care whether they choose one-on-one -on -one or small group, because if they choose three times a week, I know we're going to get them great results. If they happen to only choose twice a week, we're still going to get them pretty good results, right? And those are really the only options they have with us, two times a week or three times a week. And so I lay out for them through our health history as we're discussing their, their health, right? We talk about their balance issues. We talk about a lot about their joint issues, right? I have knee pain or I've had a knee replacement or I've had a shoulder replacement. I've had some people that have had four joint replacements. I had one guy that had four knee replacements. He only had two knees, so one knee had three replacements, unbelievable. So he had some definite musculoskeletal issues, right? And we talk about neuromuscular, motor control, proprioception, reaction time, coordination. They know all of these things are starting to slip a little bit. But what they think is they need strength training, right? Or they think they need to walk on a treadmill. Or my doctor says I should walk. And I try to very kindly say, well, your doctor is missing a whole bunch of components of function, right? Walking's important, it's nice. It's certainly not gonna get us maximal physical function, right? I explain to them why we use the functional aging training model so that we hit all components of human function so that you can move better, okay? We wanna use our credentials. Use the fact that you've been to the Functional Aging Summit. Use the fact that you heard Dr. Evan Osar talk. Use the fact that you heard Mark Middleton talk. You're an expert in your community at a level that most trainers are not. You have to leverage that. If they're sitting in front of you to buy a fitness program, they already assume you have some level of expertise, right? So share that, show that, demonstrate that. You're a functional aging specialist, or you should be. If you're not a functional aging specialist, you need to see Celia, because we have a special for you that ends in seven days because you need to become a functional aging specialist. You absolutely need to have that credential. We need to be able to find you because people are contacting us every week. Where's a functional aging specialist in Fort Lauderdale? Where's a functional aging specialist in Boca Raton? Where's a functional aging specialist in Albuquerque? You name the place, they're contacting us. See, so it looks on the map. You're not on the map if you're not certified. You gotta get on the map. So I hit all of these major components, but notice I'm not really selling a fitness program. I'm selling human function. And then I pull out the functional trajectory of aging. And a lot of times I do it old school. I actually draw it in front of them. I know some trainers in this room are using this diagram. They've got it laminated. They have it really pretty. It's really fancy. That's great. You can draw it out in front of them. You're not showing them anything they don't know. We all know that we're born, right? We all know we begin, we all know we physically mature, and we all know that we're gonna have an endpoint. The question is, are you gonna cross a disability threshold, or are you gonna live to the very end independent? So I'm sort of selling compressed morbidity. I don't say it that way. But what I'm selling is, do you want to stay on the blue line, live in life on your terms for as long as possible, doing all the things you like to do, Beth? Yes, yeah, she answered that pretty quick. Or do you want to cross a disability threshold and maybe your kids are going to tell you you have to move out of your home. Maybe you're not going to have enough energy to play with the grandkids. At this point, I'm starting to pull in some of the things they've already told me, right? Like, I'm not playing golf like I used to. Maybe you're not going to be able to keep golfing. Maybe you're not going to be able to keep boating. Maybe you're not going to be able to keep traveling to Europe like you told me about. Maybe you're not going to be able to take that trip to Galapagos Islands. Right? I'm just using their stuff. Right? They've already told me about it. And they're looking at it, and sometimes you can even see in their eyes, oh man, I'm not as high on that blue line as I should be. And that's when I tell them, there's hope. You can change your trajectory of aging, and you can make that decision today. I am selling the blue line. That is what I am selling when I sit down and sell fitness. Which is why I can confidently tell you when someone walks out and does not buy your program, you have done them a disservice. Because you have allowed them to buy the orange line. 
Does that make sense to everyone? Okay. If you let them walk out and you haven't sold them the model of healthy, positive, future aging that allows them to live like Dr. Euster did, right? Learning new things in his 90s, setting world records, and then going to bed and dying. If you're not selling them that, if you're not convincing them that you're going to change their life for the better, that their remaining years can be the best years of their life, then you're allowing them to buy the other option. So sell with confidence, sell with passion. You don't have to be aggressive. You're selling life-changing results. You're selling something that everyone should want to buy. In fact, sometimes I even see people when they realize, I don't know if this is something I want to commit to, and they sort of realize what they're saying because they've seen this. And then you can expand it, and I'll often write on it, right? If you cross a disability threshold, you no longer can climb stairs. You might have trouble even driving a car, eventually bathing and dress, dressing yourself, right? Somebody else is bathing me. Somebody else is dressing me. But what if we stay way above the disability threshold and you can do all the stuff you like to do, like travel, play with your grandchildren, golf, garden, work, all these things you told me, you stay up here for as long and as late in life as possible. You think that's something people want to buy? They want to buy that a whole lot more than they want to buy personal training. Right? It's usually at this point when they start to ask me the questions. So, how do the programs work? Do I need to train with you two times a week or three times a week? And this is when I get the price sheet out. And I say, well, if you train with us three times a week, that's 90 sessions in seven months. And then I circle that 90. And their eyes go to that circle because I just put a bullseye on the paper. Or if you train with us twice a week, that's 60 training sessions. Or if you really commit to the long haul and you do 11 months, we're going to give you a 12th month for free, and that's 156 sessions or 104 sessions. So I typically recommend three times a week. Which do you think you would like to do? And then I wait. And then I wait. And then it gets awkward sometimes but I don't say anything until they say something, right? I don't add more to it, just which would you like to do? If it takes them three minutes to answer, I don't say anything, right? Sometimes we start to say other things, they don't respond quick enough, and we mess the whole thing up, right? Because they're about to say, oh, well, I'll do the three times a week, the 549 a month, and I'll pay in full, right? But we don't get out of our own way. You gotta be quiet at that point. That's it, that's my sales process. That's the pitch I put them through. I show them this, they have two options. They can choose to train with us and we will change your aging trajectory. We will put you on a path to long-term independence so you can continue to do all the stuff you love to do. And maybe even start to do some new stuff you hadn't even thought about. Or you can walk out of here today and you can choose a different option. Any questions on that? Does that make sense? I'll have you guys come up to the mic here in just a second. So here's a little bit more complex or developed one that Debbie developed. She actually adds a fourth stage or an irreversible illness and functional decline. There are a couple different versions of this aging trajectory model. Mine is really simple. I literally just draw it out. And then I draw the disability threshold in. And then I start writing things like golf, tennis, horseback riding, typically things they've already told me they like to do or things they've told me they've started to struggle with. Right? But we make it very clear. It's not inevitable that you cross a disability threshold. You can live to 85, 90, 95. I don't know how old you're going to live, Mrs. Jones, but you can live to the end of your life and stay above the disability threshold. Is that something you would like? I never get anybody that says no on that. They're always like, yeah. In fact, I have had clients sign up because they don't want to move out of their own home. That is not a fitness goal I was taught in school. Right? They're coming to me because my daughter says I'm going to have to move out. It's time to downsize. I can't take care of my home anymore. She doesn't want me going up and down stairs. I'm like, well, what do you think about that? I want to stay in my home till I die. I'm like, all right, well, let's train you for that. Right? She wants 
functional independence for the rest of her life. That's what we're selling. We're not selling fitness. We are selling what I call the blue line of the functional trajectory of aging. If you want these slides, just email Celia. She did this PowerPoint presentation for me, so she can get it to you. This is a slide I recommend you use or learn to draw, right? Use the information they give you. I've done this with people at seminars, right? I go somewhere and I speak to eight or 10 people and I, I show them this slide and they come up and they start telling me about their activities, right? And I'll literally just draw it out on the table. I'll say, well, where do you think you are on this, right? How do you think you're doing? You're 67 years old. Are you here? Are you here? Are you here? Are you starting to have difficulty with some things? Right? And immediately they start to realize, a lot of this is under my control because I've just shown them that. Right? Any questions at all on this sales process? Anyone want to come up to the mic, ask me questions? Yeah, but what if I get this objection? What about the spouse objection? That sort of stuff. Mike. Hello, Dan. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Okay. My question is, is there an intake form that you have people fill out when they first come in to see you? Yes. And we can give you that as well. I think Celia's already given you some of our health histories. That's right. So you want to do a health history form that then helps you frame this conversation, right? Because you know they've told you they have knee pain or they told you they like to golf, right? What are some of the activities you like to do or maybe some of the things you're struggling with? So we've already sort of laid the baseline for that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I forgot about that one. That's right. Um, and then the other question is, are you, um, once you have the conversation, is there a, a workout that you take them through or any sort of physical activity or do you just go into showing rates? We go right into showing rates, okay. yeah. So sometimes this is done after they've tried a training session. Sometimes this is literally somebody calls up, I've heard about Miracles Fitness, I want more information, take them right through the sales process. So some people have done a trial workout, some have not. Uh, and I haven't found really a higher conversion either way because uh, when people come in and they're presented with this, they, they close at a pretty high rate. And of course, we're doing low barrier offers, so people will go through, we'll do a 21 day fitness transformation, and then we put them through the closing process. And of course, those close really well too. Patrick. For the community presentation, I've done a couple like Kiwanis and Rotary. Um, do you have any tricks, like a press release, or I don't know, what's your procedure for targeting community presentations at local organizations? Yeah, so you, you want to target the local organizations you really want to speak at. So Rotary and Kiwanis are two of the big ones. Um, Martin, who's coming up next, might even know more. But uh, Lions Club, Breakfast Optimist Club, and Noon Optimist Club, those are really good ones. Um, and then I would ask your five to ten best clients that are over 60, some of the clubs and organizations they're in, um, because you might not know. Some of them are unknown. I always tell people there are secret societies of older women that band together and give lots of money away. The, there's a secret philanthropy club in my town. They would not even tell me the name of it, right? And I'm sure there's one in your town, right? They want to be anonymous because when somebody's house burns down, they want to be able to give them $5,000 and the former president of Purdue doesn't want anybody to know that he's doing it, right? I stepped into this room and I looked around and I was like, Yep, she's a millionaire, she's a millionaire, yep, she owns the Mercedes dealer, yep, and, and I realized this is why they've never, never named this group, and they don't tell anybody they even meet. So those groups are out there, you're going to have to ask your 10 best clients, like what sort of philanthropy groups are they in, civic organizations, those sorts of things, okay? Dan, um, are those sessions, uh, small group sessions, or are they one-on-one? -on -one? Yes. One-on-one? -on -one? Uh, they're both. Oh, they're both. Uh, yeah. So when I present the sessions, then I really don't care whether they choose small group or one-on-one, -on -one, unless we've discussed some sort of specific need they're going to need one-on-one. -on -one. And then I just coach them to that. And I say, you know, you really need to start with one-on-one, -on -one, mm -hmm. and then we'll graduate you to small group. Okay, thank you. Yep. And you could do the same model for selling boot camp, large group fitness, any, any number. Yep. I was just curious to hear how you guys integrate, uh, like, medical consents. Uh, with, uh, with this because, you know, just in the last month, we've probably sent out somebody for COPD, uh, somebody else for, um, on FMS, um, scoring a, a one on, you know, shoulder mobility or knee function or that type of thing. How do you handle that? Yeah, good question. So somebody needs a medical clearance. 
Um, we, we just send that off to their physician. I still go through the whole process and sign them up. Um, and then at the end, I say, you know, based on your health history, we're just going to need to have your physician sign off on that. We have a database of pretty much all the physicians in town. We fax that over to the physician. We usually get it back within 24 hours. So I typically still schedule their first appointment in two to three days. And then one of my gals just makes sure the physician gets it back as quick as possible. So, um, so we try not to create that as any sort of a barrier, right? Um, and I think in 10 years, we've never had a physician not sign off on somebody working with us. Sometimes they give us restrictions or limitations, or they say, I want to see the patient again in three months, but we haven't had a physician say no. So, yeah. Uh, hi, Dan. I have a question. Um, what do you do when, let's say, you sign someone up for seven-month package, and they take vacations or in travel, what do you do in that situation? If they're working out three times a week, let's say. Well, let's say it was you, Christian, you signed up to train with me for seven months and you wanted to take a vacation for a month, how would you want me to treat you? <laughs> Hold my spot or uh, I, don't, I don't know. So, I mean, I would just, I would treat them like I would want to be treated. Right? So yeah. I would want to be treated fairly. So if they're going to take a vacation for a month, I'm not going to chart. They don't lose that month. Yeah. So they're seven months. They just tack on a month at the end. So treat them like you would want to be treated, right? I mean, if you signed up for seven months of training and all of a sudden somebody said, hey, do you want to go to California for a month? Mm -hmm. You would be like, well, I don't want to lose my month of training. Right? So treat them fairly. They'll treat you fairly. And what uh, tracking or uh, system do you use to kind of keep track of all the sessions? So we do a couple of things. We use MindBody, which I don't think is the best for tracking client sessions. Mm -hmm. uh, for small group personal training, we don't really track them. They get uh, eight, eight sessions a month. If they're doing twice a week, they get 13 a month. Um, we keep track of them coming, but if they miss a session or two, they just lose it. And then one-on-one -on -one sessions, my client's tracking that, and they use an Excel spreadsheet for that. So they're just keeping track of that every two-week time period or pay period. Yeah. Okay. But MindBody can track that for you, or Zen Planner, or some of the customer software. So okay. we try to keep it pretty simple. OK, thank you. Yep. All right, last question. Hi, a comment and a question, please. I think you can change your trajectory. You can go into the 90s, and even there, the line can go up. I'm working with people in wheelchairs, 104. I work with a lot of people, even in the 90s, up to 100. Now. Um, I'm working where I'm currently still working. I also have a benefit of teaching aqua classes, among many other classes. I have a lady in her 99 who says, Marion, before you worked with me, I had to take the big steps out. Now I can get up the ladder. And I have people telling me, Marion, I can't do without you. When you work with me, I have less pain. My arthritis is limited, and I can move. So first of all, I think you can change the trajectory to go to the 90s, and you can bring it up. And secondly, again, we didn't talk about aqua here. Most of the people cannot afford having a pool. But there are situations where you can achieve a lot in the water. Uh, cardio, you can combine things that you cannot do on land. Sure, absolutely. Stay there, Marion. You're on the hot seat. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so I you didn't... told us that you were going to take a big leap on Thursday. Did you take that big yes, leap? Yes, I've resigned from my job. You resigned from your job. All right. I'm the <laughs>